Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on Across the Fence. I'm Jolay Whitney. Today we're revisiting our story about the Hemlock Willia Delgid, or HWA. It's not much to look at, but this invasive pest has caused enormous damage to hemlock trees around the country. And since its discovery in Vermont in 2007, it's gone from being a threat to a danger for Vermont Eastern hemlocks. To learn more about the HWA, Across the Fences, Ben Willis traveled the state with two forestry experts whose research is focusing on the pest, the plant, and prevention. We consider hemlock a foundational species, so it creates a lot of unique forest conditions because it has evergreen foliage, so there's year-round shading that it provides. It's really cool, usually under a dense hemlock canopy. A lot of wildlife use or rely on hemlock. For them, there's plenty of birds that use uh, hemlock forests, other mammals, uh, dozens of mammals, you know, dozens of birds. And then hemlock are really important for aquatic ecosystems too. They often grow on stream banks, steep ravines, and so their year-round canopy cover it provides cooling and cool it keeps streams cool so it's really important for uh, cold water fish like trout there's other unique characteristics in hemlock forests there's really deep litter layer because their needles break down really slowly so it creates some really interesting soil characteristics hemlock forests store a lot of carbon which is important when we think about um, the rural forests have in mitigating climate change. So there is a, a risk as we lose hemlock trees that that could emit the carbon that they store. As the climate warms, hemlocks are now facing a new threat. A tiny, microscopic creature bent on its total destruction. The hemlock woolly adelgid. So you'll still see oversacks, but they'll be uh, kind of ragged looking. On this day, Ali Kosiba and Jim Edson are trekking to a research site in the Roaring Brook Wildlife Management Area, one of many established in the state to monitor the progress of the hemlock woolly adelgid. They are part of a collaborative effort in Vermont among UVM, the State Department of Forestry, Parks and Recreation, as well as the Department of Fish and Wildlife and other partners. Together, they are searching for ways to save the Eastern Hemlock. As they make their way to the monitoring site, Allie begins to notice signs of HWA. Oh yeah, look at this. Out here. Yeah, there, there's H and there's HWA. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, per yeah, particularly the, the white fuzziness, flocculence, mm -hmm. right, of the, Hemlock woolly adelgid is pretty obvious. From this tiny infestation, the hemlock woolly adelgid will slowly begin to kill this tree. So that's basically nutrient limitation. So you get things like chlorosis, which um, is suggesting that the, the tree is stressed and not processing correctly. That's early leaf death there. Um, so you have nutrient limitations, sugar and starch limitations from the adelgid. And, and this one also has the hemlock, elongate hemlock scale on it too. Deeper into the forest, oh. the evidence of damage due to HWA becomes more profound. That red bark, or that inner bark showing is very dramatic. And here's another one, nearly oh, dead. Wow. Yeah, wow. And that's a large tree too. Yeah. After a long hike, they reach the hemlock stand, which Jim has been monitoring. We are in the Roaring Brook Wildlife Management Area, right near the Massachusetts border. We're in a stand of hemlock trees that we've been using as a study point to try to monitor the impacts of hemlock woolly adelgid on mature hemlock trees. For about 15 years, Jim has monitored the spread of HWA at this site. Recently, he has witnessed a change as the health of the stand has begun to rapidly decline. And this was just a, a, a gorgeous, dense, mature stand dominated by hemlock. We'd been watching the crowns get a little bit thin, a little bit more sun was coming through, but it never seemed to make a drastic jump from one year to the next. And, and then when I came here this, this season, uh, it was just all these dead trees. It was sad. Jim's passion for his work is apparent as he describes in detail 
exactly how a small creature can do so much damage. The feeding of hemlock woolly adelgid, uh, first of all, robs the tree of energy because they're, they're feeding on the starch that's in the, in the fine twigs. And then also the, the, the injury caused as they put their piercing, sucking mouthpieces into the, the twigs, the tree responds, and I think of it as like a scar. That clogs the vascular system. So it's kind of a, a one-two punch on the tree. New growth there at the very tips, just barely breaking bud. And that new growth is where the next generation of HWA will go. Uh, as it elongates, the adelgid will walk out there and grab a hold of it and insert their uh, stylet, which is their mouthpiece. Wow, look at this, yeah, with all the bark coming off. As Allie and Jim move through the decimated stand of hemlocks, the bright sunlight easily passes through the thinning canopy and beats down on the forest floor below, highlighting the profound difference between the shaded, moisture-rich environment of a healthy hemlock stand and one that has been ravaged by HWA. That fact was readily apparent as our drone flew over the treetops. On the left side is footage shot earlier in a healthy hemlock stand in central Vermont. To the right are the trees at Jim's monitoring site in the southern part of the state. Hemlock is pretty sensitive to things like drought in particular. They're fire, they have fa fairly shallow root systems. Um, so it is one of the species that we're concerned with in a changing climate. If we have warmer temperatures and more soil drying, so warm air can hold more moisture. So we do know that we're seeing uh, drier soils and so that could be problematic for hemlock. And so the combination of climate change that can be a, a stress for the tree, we know that there's an interaction between decline from things like hemlock woolly adelgid and drought conditions. So a stressed tree from drought can then be more prone to severe decline from hemlock woolly adelgid. In addition, the milder winters due to a changing climate may also be aiding HWA's migration north. Hemlock woolly adelgid may benefit from a changing climate because we know that it suffers mortality when we have really cold winter days. So below negative 20, the population declines. So we actually have mortality of the insect. And so we are projecting that as we have less cold winters, milder winters, we could see um, the insects survive more and also migrate north in our state. Yeah, the, the, the natural progression of HWA uh, since the early 1950s when it was found in Virginia went more quickly until it got into New England and then it seemed to be slowing down and, and it seemed like there was kind of a magic line across the bottom of Vermont, New Hampshire and, and for a long time we weren't even finding it. Mm -hmm. And then when we finally did, you know, we, we first noticed it here in natural stands in 2007 and here we are in 2023 and we're just beginning to see mortality and now as the temperatures moderate the rate of mortality maybe will increase. So often after when the tree is declining it's then more susceptible to other um, pests and pathogens and other sort of agents taking advantage of a declining tree. So this is hemlock borer. So it's, what is an opportunistic pest of hemlock trees that comes in when the trees are already stressed. And then woodpeckers will go after uh, the borer. And so that's when we get these big chips of bark that, that fly off. So this is a you know, very late stage progression of hemlock decline. And that tree is, is certainly, if not dead yet, is, is, is very close. The sound of Allie's boots crunching on the dry forest floor alerted Jim to another risk associated with the loss of hemlocks. Hemlock oak stands present a fuel type that's so different than northern hardwood fuel types yeah. when it comes to wildland fire. Mm -hmm. And now the sun's getting through and drying this stuff out and the mixture of all these fine twigs, it creates a more intense fire. Right. And on a day like this, this, this could really go. There have been efforts to find ways to stop HWA's spread. After leaving the Roaring Brook management area, 
Jim takes us to Fort Dummer State Park in Guilford, where he shows us a release site for a small creature which will eat HWA. Well, this is a, a release site for a biocontrol agent that we use for hemlock woolly adelgid. It's a beetle, a very, very small predatory beetle called Lyricobius nigrinus. And uh, it's raised in a laboratory down at Virginia Tech. When I get it, I create this little nest of branches using a couple of clothespins, and then I insert the packing material, which has the beetles clinging to it. And as soon as they sense the fresh air and, and kind of the release of that packing material, you can see them venturing out, finding ovisacs, and yeah. start eating wow. just right away. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. We don't want to introduce another invasive problem. And so they went through years of quarantine and testing and then very controlled field testing. They're very expensive. They're hard to raise in the laboratory, which makes them expensive. I'm trying to remember, but I think we released 1,500 beetles here. With each of these tiny beetles costing around $5, it is an expensive option. And so only suited for targeting limited numbers of trees. While foresters like Allie and Jim are collaborating to create broader strategies to fight this pest across the state, citizen scientists can join the effort simply by providing data. If you spot the fuzzy white of HWA on hemlock branches, take a photo and visit vtinvasives.org where you can find contact information to alert protection foresters. At the Roaring Brook Management Area, I'm Ben Willis with Across the Fence. A hemlock management plan is now being developed for Vermont and it will be the first such plan in the state to target a single species. The effort involves extension, the state, and members of the Abenaki tribe. Thank you for spending some time with us on Across the Fence. Have a good one.